Hello, I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube with your November Climate Watch update brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz covering New Zealand, Australia and the South Pacific and what is driving our weather over the coming weeks. Let's have a look at the uh, air pressure and temperature map as we kick off November 1st. This is the misery index, here is the formula for it. It's kind of simplistic, very useful for farmers and growers in particular to kind of see at a glance which areas are hot, cold, or kind of where they should be. So New Zealand in the temperate zone for the most part, we do have some colder weather through the mountains this weekend, the first weekend of November, uh, producing a few frosts, but they will disappear pretty quickly as we go into next week. High pressure really in control of the New Zealand area, but Australia, a lot more variety going on. Now the northern half of Australia, mostly into the heat now, 30, 40 degrees, hot weather uh, is continuing on. But the Southern Ocean is still very stormy and that's producing a, a good couple of lows in the first week of the month. When I say good, I mean large. So a couple of big large lows coming through and that's gonna keep the temperatures um, fluctuating in the south. And you can see it here with the hot northerly coming straight down to the coastline and then you jump over to the western side, that's a pretty cold southerly coming up. So that kind of up and down with the winds playing um, a role with the, the varying temperatures you're seeing in the southern half of Australia more so. So let's have a look at the climate drivers. We'll do the words and then we'll show you the pictures. So let's start with the uh, La Nina discussion, the Pacific Ocean here, Enzo, still neutral, but there are signs of La Nina showing up but the signals haven't been sustained at a sufficient strength or duration to meet the Bureau of Meteorology's criteria to say that we've got a La Nina event at the moment, but it is very close. Uh, so basically we're seeing the chance of it happening, uh, La Nina that is, over November and December before it returns back to neutral. Whether we will even notice that, around New Zealand and Australia, it's very hard to know uh, because it doesn't sound overly powerful. But if you're in the tropical islands, you might start to notice more low pressure, more rain around places like Fiji, for example. Jump over to the Indian Ocean. We've got a negative phase of the Indian Ocean dipole that continues on. And what that does is it encourages more wet weather in from the northwest. So that sees thunderstorms in the northwest corner of Australia, central areas and dropping down to the south. That's exactly what we've been seeing over the last couple of weeks. And then we finally go to the Southern Ocean for SAM, the Southern Annular Mode, negative at the moment. That's why it's quite stormy um, and why both New Zealand and southern parts of Australia have had those gale force winds but it's also expected to return to neutral, and that just means all that windy stuff drops further south of us. It's still there, but just not coming in over land quite as much as it was. But like I say, we've still got some big lows to deal with for southern parts of Australia. Here is the uh, marine side of things. So around Australia, the sea surface temperatures, uh, we have to go back a month or so to see them, but September, the third warmest on record. And around New Zealand, actually we've seen um, the marine heat waves kind of reduce to some degree. Most places are normal, but the areas that do have a marine heat wave at the top of the North Island, they're either strong or severe. So that is also uh, important to note. So let's have a look at what I'm talking about. The zone about La Nina that we mentioned, it's this area here in the equator of the Pacific. And when we talk about the Indian Ocean Dipole, east and west, kind of the same thing as La Nina and El Nino over on the Pacific side. So when we're talking about the IOD, we're usually talking about this area and La Nina around the central part of the Pacific Ocean. Here is the graph. We used to show you these all the time, should try and do it more often, but this is the graph showing you what is happening in the Pacific. This is the area here where it's just flirting with La Nina. That's La Nina in blue, El Nino in the pink to the top. So all these various computer models from around the world, different countries like America and Canada, Australia, Japan, uh, all getting involved. And that shows you this slight risk here uh, going into November and December where La Nina could form. But look, you know, if it's a strong La Nina, this would be dipping right down. It's not doing that. And in fact, look how quickly it ramps back up not only to neutral, but looks like it's heading off closer towards El Nino as we maybe go into autumn of next year. It's a very long way out. It's really just like what the computers are saying at this stage. But that shows you that there is not necessarily a huge amount of confidence that La Nina is gonna be anything significant, but you never know. Only takes a slight change and suddenly you've got a lot more rain and wet weather coming down. So let's take a look at the air pressure going into November. We start with that big high that I mentioned, the anticyclone over the New Zealand area, stretching right up to the tropics, uh, encouraging those easterly winds. But there's a lot of low pressure around Australia at the moment, moving out to the uh, eastern side and another low forming on the western side. So that's why we're seeing those temperatures fluctuating as those lows move along. 
Tasmania will be very pleased to see a little bit of high pressure over them after the stormy weather. Both Tassie and uh, New Zealand South Island and Lower North Island have had an ex especially windy past few months. So a lot of that windy weather dropping south, but it's still you know, surging up and down at times, brushing some of these areas. So it's a bit of a messy start to the month for Australia, but for New Zealand, a very settled start to the month of November. Jump to week two. The big high over New Zealand is now east of us. And now we're seeing some low pressure to the north. Maybe a bit of a sign of what is happening with La Nina further up here into the tropical zone. So lows are dropping down around Australia, New South Wales, Queensland, and north of New Zealand. Also the Tasman really seeing a lot of low pressure. And hey, look at that. Tasmania again under some high pressure, but you do have a low coming in next week. So it's not all great news. Um, so between, yeah, between those two highs, there is a big, big low coming through with severe weather at the start of the first week of November. Further out, you can see a link of high pressure, but still a lot of low pressure in the Australian area in particular. So this is quite an unsettled map, even though New Zealanders might have a fairly settled start to the month. We'll be waiting to see what happens going into that second week with all of this low pressure. By the third week, looks kind of similar to that last map, still high pressure in the New Zealand area, but a lot more low pressure around the tropics of the Pacific, down around the Tasman, eastern Australia, northern Australia, and the highs, not very big, not very powerful, but they are a separator between the tropical low pressure and the storms still down here around Antarctica. So that is what we mean by um, the neutral mode for the southern annular mode, because it's still very stormy, still some very big lows, but it's dropped down where it should be, over the Southern Ocean, right next to Antarctica. And that gives us in New Zealand and Tasmania, uh, parts of Victoria, South Australia, Western Australia, all of those around the southern parts, getting a, a break in those winds and a break in the uh, big temp temperature fluctuations. So things are a little more settled, perhaps, as we go further into the month. But these large areas of low pressure to the north in the Tasman, definitely worth keeping an eye on. They could really change the forecast over the uh, weeks ahead. Here is the soil moisture levels for New Zealand. This is where we were in September. This is where we are in October. Plenty more wet weather showing up around the country following the really significant rain events we've been getting. But even though the waterways in Canterbury might be doing well, uh, the land is drying out. And we're seeing it around Hawke's Bay, coastal wide at Upper as well, and also Marlborough. Look at the New Zealand drought index. We haven't showed you this since, uh, since autumn. Now it's uh, highlighting the Hawke's Bay area. Now Hawke's Bay's had a wee bit of rain relief in recent weeks, but not a huge amount. So we're still seeing that area highlighted as now very dry. Australia's soil uh, moisture levels. This is the root zone soil moisture map showing the month of October. So it's southern parts of New South Wales, eastern parts of Victoria, although quite a large part of Victoria and New South Wales needing that rain. Also parts of Queensland, mostly in the eastern side. And some parts of Western Australia, still a bit dry. I think the rain forecast coming up is going to bring rain relief to all of these areas that are showing the dry. Whether or not every single person gets that rain relief, that's a little trickier, but we are seeing wet weather in those drier zones, so there is some good news. Here's the sea surface temperatures for the month of October, the big blob in the North Pacific, that is still there, much uh, warmer than usual conditions up there. Around Australia, we're seeing warmer than usual sea surface temperatures in the west and the east, but not so much in the south where things are a lot more uh, closer to usual. And in New Zealand, the warmth, the warmer than usual stuff is really at the top of the North Island. In fact, this map shows it better. So these are the zones where you're seeing those temperatures, you know, one to two degrees above normal. But around most of the South Island, while you do see a little bit of um, warmer shading coming through, actually not looking too bad. This makes more sense of it. Look at all the green. That means that you're in no marine heat wave, but these other areas in orange and red, that's where we're going from a strong to a severe marine heat wave. That, for the most part, means swimming. It'll be warmer. Uh, but if you do get a low pressure zone or showers moving through, the warmer sea conditions can trigger those to be heavier, increasing the chance of big downpours. Uh, that's what the uh, marine heat waves kind of do with the weather. So let's end now with the rainfall maps. Here is the big picture one. We'll just quickly animate it for you uh, for the next 15 days. To give you an idea as to where the heaviest of the rain will be, we're seeing a lot of rain up here in the tropical zones around Samoa, uh, but really not a huge amount around Fiji or Tonga. But this is the area to keep an eye on and up here further towards the tropics. If we do see La Nina, you'll be seeing more rain up there. Australia, mostly in the southeast um, of 
the country and also the southeast of Queensland. Those are areas that cut and jump out a wee bit. And in New Zealand, not really seeing huge amounts of wet weather. Here's a closer view of New Zealand for the next 15 days. What you'll see is uh, west coast rain to begin with, not very much rain elsewhere. And that rain that comes on in later into the month, I wouldn't lock that in just yet. That's to do with a low in the north that might brush us, might not. But if it does, there is a chance of some rain there. But really the pale blue out to the east, especially on the eastern and northern parts of the South Island and around Wellington, wider Upper, that's right at the lower end of the scale. Jump to Australia now, same kind of setup, here it is. Thunderstorms in the east, that big low spinning through uh, for the start of the first week of November, followed by more lows. Victoria really could be seeing some good rainfall totals coming through, as could dry parts of the east of Australia. But elsewhere, while there are some thunderstorms up here around Darwin, not really seeing a huge amount, pulling um, further southwards, and parts of Western Australia looking pretty dry, even though there is some rain relief in there, it's not as wet as it could be. So that is all from me. Before I go, let's just animate the 15 day animation. I'll put this on once I've left the screen so you can look at it a bit better. But basically, we're still seeing lows like this one, uh, bringing stormy spring-like conditions to parts of Australia. New Zealand's got a pretty settled start to the month, but we are still seeing energy to the south of us maybe being pushed a little further south due to some protective layers of high pressure, but there's still low pressure around Australia, low pressure north of New Zealand, so there are a few moving parts to keep an eye on. Thank you for joining me for the Climate Watch update for November. I'll see you one month from now with our next update.